And so I was telling my wife, you know, I think I want to learn how to code. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, well, I took a computer programming uh, class in, in school. And she hands me this four inch thick book. <laughs> <laughs> a four inch thick book on uh java the programming language java she she puts that in my lap and says you know basically have at it hey man how's it going hey sean what's going on man happy friday happy friday doing good brother doing good man Awesome. And hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of As Is To Be. I'm your co-host, Sean Achipong, Digital Transformation Specialist. And I'm Carl Reed. I go by Creed, and I'm a Digital Transformation Specialist as well. Right on. Uh, today, we have a super special guest. I'd like to introduce you to Dion D. Lewis, coming to us all the way from the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois. Dion is a self-taught full-stack web developer and founder of Code Pioneers. Personally, I've been a longtime subscriber and a fan of his YouTube channel. It's been awesome. I mean, I've learned a bunch of insights regarding developer tools, platform installations, and even a mind shift through a career transition. It's been really, really high value stuff. I've been loving it. Uh, we are super pumped and happy to have you here today. Uh, so welcome, Dion. Hey, thank, thank you. I uh, really appreciate being here with you guys. Uh, definitely going to enjoy this. Yeah, me too, Dion. I'm happier on the show. Listen, I've been listening to you for a while. You got me through the 2020 uh, COVID pandemic. I've been following your, your, your channel. I listen to your tunes. I, we talked about off camera, but I like your uh, the midnight one. I think that's my favorite one. It's just a nice chill beat that I listen to. And uh, what you probably don't know is I, I work in like in half hour, hour, hour and a half stints. So your live stream as well as your recorded um, songs is perfect. So when it ends, I'm like, okay, good break, go on to something new. So again, glad to have you on the show, man. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you. No problem, no problem. Uh, and so I mentioned, um, I've been following you. You have an interesting beginning. Can you just tell me uh, your journey? Tell us a little about yourself and feel free to share uh anything and a hint hint i love your trailer so if you want to unpack that even further i'd love to hear more about that <laughs> yeah yeah just like the, just like the trailer on the channel says um born and raised on the south side of chicago and and pretty much like you know they, they call it um a ghetto within the ghetto <laughs> wow. is what they call it so so not the best of neighborhoods you know as a matter of fact um you know it's interesting that i'm even in the computer field now because you know in elementary school there was only one computer in that school and you had actually had to be a dis a disadvantaged kid as far as like having some type of learning disability to use this computer and outside of that it was off limits so definitely i'm coming from a place where it really wasn't meant for me to be in in the computer field at all you know just the way it was set up and um you know the chicago public school system at the time was really not set up for you to get into the field of computers so um it's just interesting that i i i, I look today and here i am like you said um a full stack web developer um but yeah you know that's what happens when you just have a passion to do something um, you know, I just think about, you know, I just wanted to be involved in computers and, you know, at, at the time that I got into the field, um, AT&T was kind of like what Google is now where every, everybody wants to work at Google. And <laughs> so that's what AT&T was to me at the time, you know, right. the, the internet is booming and I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to harass every recruiter. <laughs> until I get into this company and and the harassment tactics work. Awesome. <laughs> and, and I finally got um, got in as a telecommunications technician uh, with AT&T. Wow. Wow, that's that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> Was there a catalyst to start web development and, you know, pursue this journey through Code Pioneers? Yeah, you know what? Um, around 2015, 
Um, so I was, I was part of this employee research group or resource group. That's what it's called, an employee resource group at AT&T where, you know, you just you set aside some time each month to do some volunteer work. And so um, one of the days we we were volunteering at the University of Chicago to help, you know, high school students uh, develop an interest in computer science. And basically, we were just helping them build this cool app um, on their phone. And so we had a ton of fun that day. And so at that point, I'm like, man, this is interesting. You know, up to this point, I've always been on the hardware side of, of, of computers. But, you know, this software side is kind of fun. And so I was telling my wife, you know, I think I want to learn how to code and, 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 you know, learn a programming language. And so she had she had gone to school for computer networking. That's where her her degree is in. And so she's like, well, I took a computer programming uh, class in, in school and she hands me this four inch thick book. <laughs> <laughs> a four inch thick book on uh, Java, the programming language Java. She, she puts that in my lap and says, you know, basically have at it. You know, if you if you're interested in this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll support you. But this is what you're dealing with. So she threw and, the gauntlet down. <laughs> yeah. So I look at this book and I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, this, this doesn't look like all the fun I had at, at the University of Chicago. So I set it to the side for a few months. Um, but what's interesting uh, about um, like late 2015, early 2016, Randall Stevenson, he's the CEO of AT&T at the time. And now his he he's got this whole focus of of um, this digital transformation that he sees in the industry, right? And so he's saying, hey, every employee at AT and T needs to learn all of these new tech skills by the time twenty twenty hits. So by so by twenty twenty, you all need to to know how to develop software and some type of programming skills. Um, because I see something coming where everything is going to be based on streaming. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to know about the cloud and all kinds of stuff for this new streaming industry. And what's interesting is this is this is four years before we even know that COVID-19 is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so Good that's insight. taking streaming to another level. And so when he came out and said that um, in, in a meeting with us, uh, and then he said he a partner. He set up a partnership with Udacity, where we could all learn uh, for free. I said I have to take advantage of this, and so that's what you know. It was like all the arrows are pointing towards this direction. Mm -hmm. But but here's the here's another curveball that that was thrown at me. So now I'm all 100% into this. I'm going to learn how to code. Um, my wife supporting me. Randall Stevenson said it's free. Uh, when I sign up for it, they say, well, your position in a company doesn't qualify oh. for the free tuition. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh no. <laughs> but I signed up already. <laughs> oh, no. So so I ended up, um, you know, one, once I say I'm going to do something, I, I do it. So I said, you know what, regardless if AT&T is going to pay for this or not, I'm going to foot this bill on my own. I'm, I'll pay for it myself, learn the skills, because if he's saying something's coming in 2020, then I got to I got to go along with that. And so so I, I spent my own money mm. uh, on, the, on the classes and learn how to code. Wow. Wow. And I'm curious to know now your mantra that uh, not everyone can code, but anyone can come from anywhere and code. How did you gain that? Is that over time and teaching yourself? And how did that transition into uh, the YouTube channel, Cold Pioneers, that you have right now? Yeah, you know, um, you know, when people think of Chicago, they're not thinking about um, a black guy coding, right? <laughs> they're not thinking about coding, and you know, even before, like, um, you know, certain. Uh, certain things that's portrayed on the media regarding Chicago, a, a, a lot of that stereotype, you know, goes back before even my grandmother was born, where, where you have, um, you know, these gangsters that they make movies about, Al Capone, and then there's, um, you know, baby, 
babyface nelson so so yeah. people don't look at chicago and automatically think Hey, there's software engineers that live there. There, there's doctors there. There, there there's teachers there. Um, you know, only they only think of uh, the worst part of it, this stereotype. And so, you know, my thing was, well, you know, you can't take a stereotype and apply it to over 2.7 million people. Mm-hmm. You know, 2.7 million people are not committing crimes, and mm-hmm. so, you know. Um, you know, just like that movie Ratatouille, <laughs> yeah, where they had a rat who, you know, he comes from the gutter, but he's a great chef, you know. So, so the same principle applies. Like um, a professional can come from anywhere in the world, you know, regardless of what you think they should come from or what type of background they should have. And, and the reality is, we see it every day. We're just not thinking about it. But, um, you know, I, I think about. Um, you know, all the teachers that have influenced my life, you know, all the times I've gone to the doctor, all of these people are in Chicago. And so there, there's there's more to an area than what's portrayed in movies and, and what's on the media. And so that's, that's kind of where I was going with that. Like, hey, here's another side that you maybe have not considered, um, but it's not just Chicago. You know, I think the same principle could apply to to anybody wherever they're living on the planet. You know, whatever stereotype that exists in that locality, you know, you can get rid of all of that because whatever a person decides to do and decides they want to be, they can do it. I absolutely love that. And once you've achieved that, is there like what made you want to share and I guess, uh, give these these tips because I've watched your channel and I, I admit I made a a video of me cross mapping <laughs> to jazz okay <laughs> not anywhere close to how it looks on your channel but you're sharing tips all the time you're giving information you know what transition for you to style start sharing yourself with others um well definitely um I think the the global pandemic was a wake-up call to a lot of people because it's all impacted us in one way or another there's no there's no escape from it you know it's not you know it's not one of those events where it's only targeted to you know one specific part of the world you know maybe a hurricane or maybe an earthquake uh this is something that impacted the whole earth and so you know when 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 it came for us at work where now as a developer they sent all the developers home to work and so I'm like, man, I have all this free time now. Mm-hmm. You know, what should I do with this? <laughs> you know, when you when you get time back, <laughs> you know, that's 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 a power that you you want to make sure you capitalize on. So this this is not just, you know, free time for me to, you know, spend in recreation. What what could I do positive to the with this? And my thoughts were, you know okay, I made the decision to learn these skills that has kind of preserved me uh, during this, this pandemic, you know, because, you know, if I was, if I was on the other side of technology, you know, would I still have a job? You know, what about all these restaurant workers and, and other places that are shut down? And, you know, maybe they want to use this time to learn. So what could I put out there to give people the motivation and, and inspire them to say, hey, I'm using my downtime to motivate you to use your downtime to learn some new skills because we don't know really what's coming on the other side of this, but we know that whatever we did yesterday, we got to do something different tomorrow. <laughs> and so that that kind of was my mindset, you know, if I could share just one thing with one person that inspires them to move past whatever whatever negative effects the pandemic has had on them, then then I, I look at that as a success. And so that's kind of, you know, where Cold Pioneers came from. You know, it's like, I can't be, you know, selfish. And if, if I can make it from the South side of Chicago, I'm sure somebody with, with some type of circumstances, worse, similar, or above mine can do it too. 
Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, Sean, you and I can relate to that, eh? Because uh, <laughs> it was it Sean that said, hey, Carl, how you been? Well, it's COVID. Well, let's start a podcast. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Let, let's share, right? <laughs> and I, I'm thankful that you did that. I'm thankful that you did that every day, Sean, that you said, hey, let's get this started. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And uh, Diani touched on a lot of really good points. I mean, uh, just the value of time, you know, it's the most, one of the most important things that we have time, you know, and the fact that we get it back, not taking that hour long or two hour long commute to work, but we can just be creative at home. And um, now with this extra time, what can we do with it? E equally, you know, one of my favorite movies and actually me and, and our, my family, uh, one of our favorite movies is Ratatouille and the whole concept of anyone can cook, you know? It totally applies and the ability to challenge and break norms and try something new um, or doing something different tomorrow. Yeah, I completely wholeheartedly agree and uh, I really value your your input and insight on that. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, thank you. So do you have any uh, tips or tricks? I mean, like I'm looking at your screen, it looks beautiful. Your mic sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you right. You, you you went from you know teaching yourself how to code, how to program, uh, making a YouTube video. Is if there's one or two or, or three even things that you want to share? Is there anything that uh, you would think that the audience could benefit from going your, through your journey? Yeah, definitely. Um, um, well, first in, in response to the mic and everything. <laughs> So, so that that's just me reinvesting it into uh, you know what I put out there, you know. So, so so cold pioneers, you know, it it bring those videos bring in ad revenue, and you know I'm like right now I'm like well I'm still a developer, <laughs> you know it's not like I'm living off of the, the YouTube revenue. So so I just take it, you know whatever ad revenue and whatever you know brand deals come in from that I just kind of put it back into the YouTube and Cold Pioneers to just make a better feel for everybody, a better experience. You know, as far as tactics that I use, uh, matter of fact, there was a couple of books that I read. Uh, one was uh, called Deep Work by Cal Newport. And um, there was just a lot of tips in there on like how to focus. Um, because in, in anything that you're going to try to accomplish that's extraordinary, you can't have a lot of distractions. So there is a lot of tips in there as far as, okay, how do you, especially the world we live in, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, there's distractions everywhere, you know, you just, just holding your phone in your pocket, <laughs> you know, you got a million distractions in there. So, so that book was, um, really good, um, as far as blocking out time because, you know, learning how to code was hard. You know, that that phrase that um, they made popular, you know, uh, learn how to code. And yeah, <laughs> Steve Jobs made, he made that popular, right? Because, um, you know, he came out and said, I think everybody should learn how to program because it teaches you how to think. Think, yeah. And so he, he kind of, um, you know, when that, when that came out, he made it popular. Like, hey, everybody just learn this. But it's not a skill that you can just, um, all right, I'm going to I'm gonna spend a month or two and I'm going to learn this. And now all of a sudden I'm a software engineer. There, there's a long process for your brain to retain that, that information because uh, your, your brain doesn't want to retain anything that it feels is useless. <laughs> and, and, and you have to somehow convince your brain that, hey, this this technology that I'm learning, I, I really am going to use this. I really do need this. You know, don't throw this out with the rest of the stuff in my subconscious, right? Uh, so deep work helped with that. And um, there was another book that I read. It was called Ultra Learning by Scott Young. He was, uh, he's this guy that um, he took like the whole MIT curriculum curriculum on his own <laughs> and like passed all of the, all of the, uh, <laughs> all the tests and everything. So he, he didn't attend the school or anything. He just took the courses. And in his book, he he's talking about the techniques that he used to learn, you know, years of information in a short amount of time. And, and some of the things that he had in, on, on how he was able to retain that information. Because I think 
I think that's the hardest part of learning anything. You know, you can you can read something or somebody can tell you something, but forcing the mind to hold that information there <laughs> and, and put it to long term memory is, is a problem. So so those two books there was a, a really uh, huge help for me. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, especially once I, I can totally relate, like once learning developments, the fundamentals and object oriented, event driven, what have you. It, once you have the logic down, it just has, creates a ripple effect over your career and the ability to process and calculate and solve problems of, of different magnitudes. So couldn't agree more. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. You know, what was interesting, uh, after I learned, finished the, uh, the classes at Udacity, I still felt unqualified to, to go out and be a developer. And so I went back to work like normal. <laughs> You know, I was I was still looking for um, like to make a move in technology um, away from AT and T, but I was not looking for a coding job because, you know, I'm I'm still in that process of of kind of understanding. Hey, you can do this regardless of where you come from, mm -hmm. and so it took me almost a, a good six months or almost a year to even start applying again. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I, I finished their courses in the summer of 2016, and I, I didn't start applying for developer jobs until spring of 2017. Wow, wow. So you had, yeah, to, overcome so, that, you had to overcome that doubt. Yeah, yeah, I had to overcome that because there, there wasn't, you know, there was no Code Pioneers channel where and, and that's kind of why i put the live stream out there mm -hmm. you know so that any at any time of day somebody can go on there you know listen to uh, some inspiring music and see somebody program right <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean it's pro he's programming 24 7 so it, it's kind of like you know just that loyal friend of motivation and so kind of you know be a constant reminder that Hey, man, you know, if you're ever having a down day, like maybe I can't apply for this job, you know, because in, 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 in technology, when you when you click on a job description, it's going to list every single technology that that exists. <laughs> mm. And so that could be discouraging. And so so that that's kind of what led to the live stream, you know, um, you know, if, if you have something that no matter what time of day it is, you know, midnight coding or <laughs> early morning, late afternoon, you, you jump on there, you need some inspiration real quick. You're going to hear some inspiring music and you're going to see somebody just working away, working hard. You know, a lot of people, they come on there and, and they joke about the cup of the, the mug of coffee <laughs> that the developer never drinks in the stream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And um, you know, I've kind of, I've kind of left that open into inter for interpretation on, on, you know, why do you think he never takes a break to drink from that 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 mug? So I, I won't go too far into that, but you know, that's basically what's behind it. You know, just motivation because, you know, I just wish I had something that would have narrowed that that gap between, hey, I I did what I was supposed to do. I put in the work. I learned this. Now let me go, you know, put it to use in the world. And, and, you know, that was almost a year that was gone. And, you know, fortunately, you know, I was able to, to get over that. But what if I had never, you know, gotten over that? You know, I wouldn't be a developer. There would be no coal pioneers. That's, man, that's really inspiring. Um, I'm fascinated. Um, how can people continue to follow you and reach out to you even? for be it web development advice, support. Um, how can people follow you on your journey? Yeah, so outside of the the YouTube channel, Code Pioneers, um, I've got, I'm all over social media. We have the Code Pioneers Facebook page, Instagram, um, Twitter. So my, my wife is kind of like my social media manager, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I just started out, you know, I, I want to put some advice on YouTube and, you know, she, she came in and say, Hey, you need to, you need to be on these other 
you know, social media channels too. So, so I'm on all of the social media channels and, and we have a, a website that uh, we're developing right now, uh, coldpioneers.com. So it used to be a website that I use just to, you know, just to like make websites on the side as some like contract work, but we're, we're uh, redesigning it, redeveloping it for some future things. Right on. Sounds like we got to bring you back and bring your wife next time too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She liked that. Yeah, she 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 does a lot of work behind the scenes that um, like she maintains that whole live stream. You know, she's she's the reason, uh, you know, why there's new music added all the time. She's responding to all the emails. So so she's keeping she's keeping it up where I, I don't have time to do everything because nobody can do everything on their own. Mm -hmm. So she's a huge part of uh, Cold Pioneers. Absolutely. What's your wife's name? Uh, Sharon. Sharon. Shout out to Sharon. Holding that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And there you have it, folks. Um, thank you again, Dion, for joining us here today. Hey, thank you again for inviting me on. Great, great talking to you guys. Awesome. Awesome. My pleasure. And thank you always, Carl. You know, it's uh, it's been a peach as always, brother. Absolutely, man. I can't wait to tell my, my kids I, I, I uh, interviewed Dion because <laughs> they're streaming your stuff online, man. So yeah, YouTubers are like superheroes to these kids. These <laughs> it days, it right? is. I'm telling you. <laughs> and my son is programming now, right? He taught himself oh, to nice. code as well. So he's listening. He's trust me, he's going to be watching this podcast for sure. Nice. That's awesome. So just in closing, you know, stay cool, everybody. And remember, you can live your life as is, or you can chase a dream of where you want your future to be. Peace. Peace. Peace.